Today I want to take a look at how to add a contact entry for another user using Graph API. So here we are looking at Graph Explorer and the first thing you'll notice is a button on the left that says sign in with Microsoft. We can use this to run different REST API calls against Graph. We'll get prompted for a username and we'll get prompted about permissions. Here's a list of permissions the Graph API Explorer application wants to use. And there is an interesting checkbox to consent on behalf of the whole organization that would grant access for all users in the tenant. For now, we're going to leave that alone and we'll just accept for the current user. And once you're into Graph API Explorer, the first thing you can execute is get my profile, which is a slash me, and it comes back with a 200 successful code and details about the user at the bottom. We want to work with contact data and exchange online, so we're going to find a different endpoint. On the left-hand side, if we scroll down, you'll find a heading for personal contacts to enumerate or to add one. We'll click on My Contacts, Run Query, comes back 200 successful, but no data because we don't have any entries yet. We'll go ahead and add some test data. So here we can add a new contact, and we'll just call it Test demo test at demo.com go ahead and create a new contact entry come back over run our API call now we're getting 200 and we have some data with a test username so we're successfully querying contacts for the currently logged in user so a good start now to complete this for another user we're gonna switch accounts I've got another Chrome session up and running for a user named George and we got our UPN logged in here with George and we went to Graph Explorer, same thing, and just opened up the home page to get started. Run query for the current user, make sure that it's connected. You can see the UPN display name and the endpoint is slash me. If we came over here and we search the sample queries for my contacts, we can enumerate the contacts George has. If there's nothing here at all, we'll give him a test record also. So this will be George test, George test at demo. And now we've created a, a test contact on the second user account. So now if we run our query, we'll get a 200 OK with GUID numbers and different JSON data. We can see the display name and all the attributes we added. So we have test data on both sides. Both sides can successfully query their personal contacts with a slash me slash contacts. What we want to do is query for a different user. So if I wanted to read George's contacts, I would do slash users. I would put in the UPN and actually get a suggestion drop down of all the different endpoints that we're able to use. And that's fantastic for exploring and learning. And that's the number one reason you want to use Graph Explorer is all the suggestions. So we'll come in here and run slash contacts and we get a 403, the access is denied. Not that our endpoint is invalid, but just that the permissions are denied. There's an extra step that's required. Uh, what we're gonna do is change modify permissions over here, and we're gonna be looking for anything to do with contacts. I wanna go ahead and modify, pick out our user, and we're going to do this checkbox for grant on behalf of the organization. That's going to increase the API grant for this particular entry to the entire organization. So you come over here and we do the same thing again. And we'll pick out contacts. And this time we get a slightly different error, a 404. The 403 means we need to go do Azure API grants. The 404 kind of hints that it's not there, but we know that it's there because we can see it in our other session. The fix on this one is to add an exchange mailbox folder permission for that one specific folder. So if we locate some PowerShell code, come over here and execute it, we'll be prompted to log in. We'll go ahead and put in our username and password. And that's going to connect to Exchange Online. It's importing the remote module. There we go get a listing of all the commandlets that are available and our permission grant is now ready to execute. So here we're going to do add mailbox folder permission. We're going to put in the name of the folder we want access to, the name of the user that needs access, and that access right is owner. So the where, the who, 
and then the what. So you can see it went through successfully. We get an object back indicating that we're now granted owner access. We'll run our query again and we're seeing 200. This is beautiful. So we're getting HTTP 200 with JSON data. There's George's contact from a different user account. Very cool stuff. Now, if we were to scroll down the left hand side and do add a contact, there's a template with some JSON and it can add to the current user, but we actually want to add to the remote user. So we're going to change our endpoint to a remote user, have some JSON for the data we're trying to add. This is a post transaction. We'll go ahead and run query. And now we get a different code number we haven't seen, 201. So 201 is created. Very cool stuff. We're not reading those contacts on the other side. Now we're modifying them. Come over to George's account, and you can see that this new contact has been successfully added. That's really, really cool stuff. So we're running the HTTP post as Jeff, and it's adding to George's account, and we're getting back a 201 code. So this is the full pipeline that you need both the Azure API grant and the Exchange folder grant. Now the Exchange folder grant, you think about Outlook on the desktop, connecting to someone else's account, doing delegation. This is more of a permissioning on the Exchange folder, which is downstream, and the API call is more upstream. But you do need both for things to work. From a management perspective, we can go over to Azure and look at the enterprise application. And here we have a list of all of our enterprise applications. We want to find the one that's called Graph Explorer. And we do a search for the keyword graph. We get one match for Graph Explorer with a GUID number. Click on it to drill down for detail. And on the left, you can go into permissions. And you can see the admin consent for the full organization. And there's a button up here for review permissions. You can always use this if you needed to revoke permissions or make some modification. You could say the perm app has more permissions than I want, and it actually has PowerShell code with the GUID number for this one app, and it'll, it'll let you enumerate those and maybe remove them and do different cleanup. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with uh, Azure AD and, and automation. So this gives you some reporting. It, there's an audit log and sign-in activity on the left, but it also provides PowerShell for cleanup. So you want to use portal.azure.com for any of the management. But we did add our data on the remote user account successfully with an HTTP call. And thank you for watching.